Okay, guys, when choosing a camshaft for your LS, what happens if you go bigger and bigger? Do you eventually find the wrong cam? Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Holder, and welcome to the channel. If you'd be so kind, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, go to all those corners if they're in the corners, <laughs> so you get notified when I do all this testing. Today, we're looking at different camshafts for a 5.3 liter. Can you go too big, or can you put the wrong cam in a 5.3 and have them basically stop making power? So we're going to run four different camshafts on the 5.3 and find out what happens when we go too big. Okay, guys, as I talked about the introduction, the question is, can you put too big of a cam or the wrong cam in your combination? And this is another example. This has happened to me a couple of times where we keep putting bigger and bigger camshafts in. And ultimately what happens is, and this happened on the 408 stroker. You can take a look at that video. It's up. But on the 408 stroker, we went from like a 240 cam to a 246 cam. And you think, well, Richard, that's just a bigger cam. It should add more power on top and trade power down low. And in that example, what it ended up doing is just losing power down low and didn't really gain anything on top. And I've got four cams here. These are all from Brian Tooley Racing that we ran on the L33. And I'm going to show you that we got to that same kind of tipping point where at least the cams that we tried going up to a bigger camshaft resulted in very little gain in power. Um, so there's a point where, hey, maybe we have enough camshaft in this thing, but let's take a look and see what happens. This was our L33, our 5.3 liter aluminum motor that I got from the wrecking yard. It was equipped with an aluminum block and it had flat top pistons. It had the 799 heads on it. We did put a valve spring upgrade it on it. For this test, it had the factory truck intake manifold and throttle body. It had our Mazir electric water pump. We control. We were running it with a Holly HP management system. And as usual, we had long tube headers on it feeding collector extensions. And what we did was run it with the stock L33 camshaft, which for those guys that are interested, 482 lift. 193, 193 single pattern duration and 116 degree lobe separation. So the factory L33, the HO camshaft, was a little bit bigger, a small step up from the factory LM7 camshaft or LR4 camshaft that we normally run. So start right off the bat, that camshaft is a little bit better. And if you want to take a look and see how much better that cam is than the mildest cam, which is the LM7 camshaft, take a look at the ultimate uh, guide to... Um, factory camshafts because that video is up too so you can see how all the factory cams did including this these two but run in this manner oh. are, are basically stock l33 produced 364.5 horsepower we'll call that 365 and 389 foot pounds of torque and here's what happened when we put the first of our three uh, camshafts from the guys over Brian Tui. This was the ever popular Truck Norris cam. And when guys rec when guys are looking for a camshaft, this kind of camshaft is the camshaft that I normally recommend to people. It has a good combination of, you know, peak power if you're looking to do that. But also, it doesn't trade off a bunch of low speed power. And we'll see that in the comparison between these other cams. But here's what happened when we put the Truck Norris cam in. You can see we got good gains basically everywhere. So this pushed our peak power up to 424 horsepower, pushed peak torque up to 415 foot-pounds. And you can see that not only did it raise the peak power, but from 6,000 6,500, it was essentially the same amount of power. So it wasn't rising, but it continued to carry it out. So if you were to rev this thing out, this thing would make really good power. We did see a little bit of a trade-off compared to the stock cam below 3,000 RPM. But basically everywhere else, the Truck Norris cam obviously is a good cam upgrade, which again is why when guys are looking, hey, what cam should I put in my 5.3? This, <laughs> this kind of camshaft works very well. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we go up in camshaft from the Truck Norris. Okay, now they're taking a look at a comparison between the stock L33 camshaft and the Truck Norris cam from Brian Tooley Racing. We're going to step up in camshaft size to their hot rod cam. And it should be noted that the hot rod cam and the, and the red hot cam, which we're also going to show you, these were actually designed for for LS3 motors, I think. And and I told Brian that we were going to run them on the 5.3. He's like, okay, good. Let's let's give it a try. And they did fairly well. But um, know that these were not designed for that. But we're going to see how they perform. So this was our combination with the Truck Norris cam. It was 424 horsepower, 415 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened. You, you guys will remember, this is to give you an idea, just a reminder. This was the stock cam. But I want to get rid of the stock cam so this doesn't get confusing. 
Here is the hot rod cam. I'm going to go ahead and put the specs up so that in the, on the hot rod cam, we stepped up from on the truck Norris cam, it was 553 lift, a 212, 220 something degree duration split, and 107.5 degree lobe separation angle. Well, the hot rod cam stepped things up both in lift and duration. So on the lift side, 619, 607 lift split, a 217, 230 something degree duration split, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. So the new hot rod cam had more lift, another 50 thousandths or more, and seemed to step up um, five degrees of intake duration, and then somewhere in the eight to 10 degrees of exhaust duration, also a wider lobe separation angle. So you can see it did indeed improve power, pick power up to 449.3 horsepower, Peak torque was actually very, very close, 416 foot-pounds. You can see our crossover her here occurred at 4,900 RPM. Below that point, the truck Norris cam made more power than the hot rod cam. Above that, the hot rod cam made more power than the truck Norris cam. So this is one of those situations where, hey, which one do you choose? And it would depend on what you're trying to do. Is much more peak power from 5,000 or 4,900 on out? Is that more important to you? Or is more, more torque down below that point, below 4,900, is that more important to you? And you can see that as we went up and, you know, this is a little bit wilder camshaft. Honestly, a 217 cam is not that, still not that big and did make good power, 450 horsepower with a, with a stock 5.3 uh, that had headers on it. That's actually pretty good power and it did very well. And as we'll see we'll, on our next comparison, we're going to step up to an even bigger camshaft and see if we can continue this trend. Are we going to keep going up in power? And when we do that, are we going to keep trading power? But I want to get rid of the um, truck Norris cam. And I want to show you how the hot rod cam compared to the stock cam, because this is interesting. And this is probably what you would be thinking of upgrading it with. So we have our stock cam here, you know, 365 horsepower. And the hot rod cam lost power below 3,500 RPM. And you remember on the truck Norris cam, it was below 3,000. So it extended that out a little bit more. Um, it was making the same power as the stock cam up to about 3,900 RPM in this range here. And then above that point, so from, you know, let's say 3,900 on out, the hot rod cam was definitely better. So if you're comparing this to the stock cam, you have a pretty good range, you know, above 4,000 RPM and all the way out past 6,500 RPM, the hot rod cam is going to work pretty well. But this tells us a couple things. On the hot rod cam, judging by how well it did compared to the stock one, I think you're definitely in uh, needing a new converter territory. <laughs> This one will definitely have, you know, more aggressive idle than the truck Norris cam and certainly more than the stock cam. So you're going to need a converter. You're going to definitely need with all the camshafts, you're definitely going to need tuning. But it's important to note that when you look at camshafts like this, you know, you got to start thinking about these other things. Yeah, you, you probably would want gear and you probably would want converter. But if you got it, <laughs> you're looking at a camshaft that added, you know, 85 or 90 horsepower. So it's a pretty good gain. So now let's check out and see what happens when we add our final camshaft, which is the Red Hot. Okay, now we'll take a look at our final camshaft, and this was the Brian Tweed Racing Red Hot Cam. Again, <laughs> designed not for this, this Junkyard 5.3, but it goes to show, um, you know, if you were going to choose this kind of camshaft, this is something to look for. So this was our combination with our Brian Tweed Racing Hot Rod Cam. That was the 619, 607 lift, 217, 230X duration, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. That one made 449 horsepower. 416 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we installed the larger Red Hot cam. You can see it did make a little bit more power. <laughs> Not a whole bunch. Um, 454, let's see. Yeah, 454 horsepower. Peak torque was, you know, within one foot-pound, so that was kind of the same. The Red Hot cam did lose a little bit of power down low here, down at the 3,000 RPM range. Yeah, seven or eight foot pounds of torque. You can see um, the Red Hot cam was a 619, 617 lift. So same intake lift, a uh, little bit more exhaust lift than the Hot Rod cam. It was a 221, 240X. So we don't know about the total duration there and 113 degree lobe separation angle. So it had about four more degrees of intake duration and somewhere near 10 degrees or so more exhaust duration and a 113 LSA instead of a 114 LSA. And you can see here, 
Not a big change in power. In fact, it made very close to the same power for most of the curve. We had a little bit of rocking of the curve, made a little bit more power you know, out on the top, a little bit less power down low. We see that quite often with bigger camshafts, but it goes to show you now, here's the question. Which one of these cams would you pick? Um, we'll go ahead and show all of them now. So hopefully it won't be too hard to take a look. Let's go to our Truck Norris cam. And then our stock cam. So you can see we have successive, successive steps up. The stock cam made the lease and then the Truck Norris cam and then the hot rod cam, and then the red hot cam. But on the other end of the scale, we see that, you know, the Truck Norris cam had the most low speed torque, certainly below 4,500 or 4,700 RPM, and that uh, the hot rod cam the tr and the red hot cam were both fairly consistent. They both lost torque compared to the stock cam below 36 or 3,700 RPM. But compared to the Truck Norris cam, they lost torque from about 4,600 RPM. So again, all this goes to show you when you're picking your camshaft, you're not only are you going to have to pick it for the RPM range that you want, but also you're going to have to deal probably with some kind of trade-off because if you want more power down low, it's probably going to cost you more power up top. There you have it. I'm Richard Older. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.